often you use a cliche or people hear coaches say it doesn't get any bigger than this you know and obviously the biggest is the world cup final so you you, you know that's where it does does get the biggest but saying there's a full game in south africa to have a full house at loftus in round 11 of a competition it probably doesn't get bigger for a lot of these players than that too i mean i don't know if most of these players have ever played in front of a 50,000 crowd. Yes, sure, the, the World Cup winners and the Springboks. Not too many provincial players would have played in front of 50,000 people. So that in itself comes with a with a challenge for the for the young guys who've never done that before as well. And I suppose that's part of our coaching is to get them to pitch up when they, when there is 50,000 people there. That's that sounds sort of sounds weird pitching up. But, I think everything on the on the day is going to take care of itself anyway. You don't have to. I think it's one of those games where you don't have to say much. And obviously, one of the days that you don't, or the preempted uh, part of the of the, of the of the whole occasion, don't want to make too much out of that. Yeah. You made mention of that earlier the week. You mean in terms of the, yeah, the of history the, of the uh, comp? And, yeah. You know, I mean, um, I'll say it again. You know, a mate of mine, my best mate, phoned me. He said, "Please, uh, he lives in Cape Town. He's got to help me, Jack. I'm getting abused here. You know." Um, so even my best friend is giving me gears now about you know the last couple of seasons as a, but you know this group and I and I really would like to put in perspective the age group of the age profile of when we started three years ago and having then played the Stormers in a final and then having played the Stormers in a semi final in Cape Town, um, I would have taken that I would have taken that with that group of players. Because eventually what's going to happen, the team grows and they get bigger and stronger and older and more experienced. And we're on that, we on that pathway. So tomorrow for me is, you know, it's irrelevant what happened before because our growth process has got to be, it's got to be to get better and better and better. And, and I really believe, you know, if you look at our team now, if you look at the way we're playing, if you look at the way our combinations are now getting together, if you look at the kind of caliber of, of play we're bringing in, Akafanameva, Springbok, Nazamka, Springbok, Billy LaRue, Springbok, Devon, you know, 31 years old, season pro, won a Curry Cup. I mean, all of a sudden you're adding that to the, the, the guys who were in our system as youngsters, you know, the Grobis and the, and the Ruan Nokias and the, you know, the, the David Creels and, the, and then all of a sudden we're in a very good place. So, I'm excited for tomorrow, I and mean, I'm really excited for tomorrow. It's uh, it's it's nice for the guys. It's nice for them to play in front of a fifty thousand, you know, paying for the bulls again like the old days. I mean, that's, that's I'm I'm glad they can they can be part of that because hopefully that'll be the catalyst for us mm. to to kick on in the next couple of seasons. Last one from me. It must be a marker for you personally as well as a coach. So Correct. tomorrow is one of those days. And you've made mention of the World Cup final. Yes, yeah. that's ultimate prizes. But coming down to this respectively yeah. spur and yeah. with respect spoken. Yeah, Simon, I will say it is a marker, but um, it's not, it's not, it's not, a, I really want to stress to you that it's, it doesn't mean tomorrow's make or break. You know? mm. Tomorrow's a marker for me to see where we are, what we need to add, you know, what's working. You know, and, and there's a lot of things that are working. And what I'm saying, so I'm, I'm not looking at the glass half empty. I'm looking at the glass half full. Where we were and where we are now is like chalk and cheese. You know? And does that mean that 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 we'll win because we're better? You know, there's no guarantees in rugby. You know, they also they also got a good team. And you know, people say you know that you lost X amount of times to the Stormers. Well, you know, guys, not many teams have beaten the Stormers in the URC in the last two seasons. Not many, and a lot of them with international players. And uh, yeah, and, and they've been the form team. I mean, Leinster have won 95% of their games the last two years. They haven't won a trophy. In fact, they've even played in the final the last two seasons. Now, that just puts things in perspective for me. Um, but isn't it a wonderful thing that two sides in South Africa get 50,000 people to a pool game? I mean, gee, guys, I mean, for me, then then, I'm, then I think the players and the people involved are doing their, they're doing their bit for rugby in South Africa. Jack, it's obviously injury enforced that the big call... No, Reinhardt at seven. Reinhardt Ludwig at seven. Yeah, not really. I mean, I, I, you know, again, um, I remember when I made Ruan Nokia captain, everyone said to me, geez, Jake, you know. But Reinhardt Ludwig has played seven for us. Mm. He hasn't played as well as I'd like him to. But, you know, it's a different combination now. Um, he's a bit older. He's a bit like, you know, you know, people don't want to even make comparison because some players are phenomenal. I mean, I coached Peter Steff to toy and I moved him to seven when I was at the Sharks and he was a youngster. And I remember when he moved to seven, people asked me the same question. Isn't it a big call that he goes to seven? He yeah. then became the best player in the world. 
and he's won two World Cups and he was player of the match twice in World Cup final. So I've seen this movie before, you know, and yeah, he might, you know, he might struggle a bit tomorrow. I'm sure, you know, it's a big game, 50,000 people, youngster, but I'm, I've got full faith in him. You know, there's a lot of things he's going to add to us. He's very clever. Yeah. He works incredibly hard. I mean, he's got to work great, you know. He's, uh, he's not slow. I mean, people, you know, as a loose, as a loose forward, he's, he's relatively quick, even though, you know, as I said, he's a good lock playing loose forward. He's relatively quick. And the thing I really enjoy about him is he's got game awareness and intelligence. You know? He knows, he picks up things quickly, doesn't make mistakes. You know, he's, uh, he's that sort of guy. I'm glad that he can play with a guy like Marcel and, and Marku. Because it seems like good. a nice combination. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I'm quite excited mm-hmm. to see what it looks like, you know. And it puts pressure line-out wise. You've got two two meter you've got three two meter guys in the line out now, yeah. you know. So it'll be interesting to see how much pressure we can put on the on the on the Stormers line out. You'll obviously miss a guy like Ulrich Lowe. I mean he's mm-hmm. such a good ball carrier. Mm-hmm. Uh, well that's why I didn't pick him because with the shoulder like mm-hmm. it is, if he can't do that, which is good at it's just ball carrying. It's highly unlikely that he can add, and I don't mean a nasty to him, mm. but his strength, his, you take his strength away, you know, we, we lose something, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's as I, and again, because you never really have your best 23. I mean, when I was coaching the Springboks as well, you know, when you get Monty back, you lose John de Villiers. When you get John de Villiers back, you lose Carl Berger. You know, when you get Bucky's back, you lose Donnie Rousseau. You know? So you never really get, as you get, as you get longer and older in this job, you realize that. And, you know, I, I really don't want to, but I mean, Ulrich, to be fair, you know, also he's played in all these games and has never really been the best player on the field in, these ga- in this game, this particular game. He's dominated against, so maybe, who knows, maybe that combination for us is sometimes by default it works and it actually works better on that game and that opposition than it was, because we've tried the other one, we've tried with the other combination. Except for soccer, because I don't mean it like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying sometimes, you know, I remember one of the most amazing stories. I was with Nick Mallet in, in France, and Justin Swart was the fullback. And we went to captain's practice, and the non-playing guys were went shopping. And Monty arrived back from shopping with hobos or bags, you know. Uh, Ralph Lauren and, you know, and all the top brands. And at the captain's practice, Justin Swart pulled his hamstring. So Monty went from shopping into the starting lineup. <laughs> and he played 100 tests after that, you know. So sometimes, it just shows you, you know, sometimes you, by, by circumstance, a guy comes in and, you know, he played 100 tests, won a World Cup, you yeah. know what I mean? So sometimes you need, sometimes you need things to bounce in your favor. And who knows, maybe Ludwig shows tomorrow that he's, that he's talented enough to play in a combination as a seven flanker. Just tomorrow, how key will be sort of the leadership group and Springboks again? You know, making sure that mm-hmm. keeping the other guys calm in front of that huge crowd. So uh, that, that's that's not the reason, but one of the things I get comfort out of is that if you have Akif and Amava on your bench, Nazam Khan on your bench, and you have Billy Larue on your bench, when we finish with those guys on the field, you're talking about three experienced Springboks that are going to be in the back end of a of a game when when it could be. You know, it could be tight at the end when it and it generally is. You look at the games; it's like there hasn't been too many, many blowouts against us in the last couple of years. It's always been very close, like one score. So to have the leadership which we have, but also to have the experience of those three Springboks coming off the bench, um, is going to be vital for us. Um, so I get if you all see what happened last time we played the Lions. Aka came on, made a massive impact. Kursen came on, made a massive impact. Um, it's a wonderful thing for me to have three Springboks on the bench. I'm not taking it away from the other players, but you've got guys. Nazam has been a captain, so he comes on. Akar has been, you know, been a Springbok. He understands pressure, and uh, you know, as I said, Anvili's won two World Cups, so it's going to be nice when the 50,000 and you've got him at the back end of a game when he can control everything. And is that testament to the depth that you wanted to create? Yeah. Like well, it's closer. Control. It's closer. It's not where I want to be, guys. I mean, you, I said to you, I still would love to get all the main players from South Africa back to South Africa. But, I mean, if we've got the squads we've got now and we're getting 50,000 people, imagine if we had Erg here tomorrow and if we had Jason Jenkins here and Jesse Creel here and, you know, and I'm only using Pollard <laughs> and the guys who played at the Bulls. Imagine if we had those guys still here. I mean, it would be, you know, as I said, could be even bigger if it could be. Could be even bigger. 
just finding that balance between nullifying the stomas from what we do good and also giving you guys do what you do best. How do you guys find that balance to your answer? Yeah, I wish I knew that answer because that's the secret. You know, Simon asked, tomorrow you're going to pitch up? Uh, yeah, and, that, and pitching up doesn't mean physically. Pitching up means you've got to come with your game head on. Um, we've lost to them a few times, and the times we've lost to them, it's almost been through, through an inexperience of understanding what's happening around you. you know? So, and it's sometimes the, sometimes the good players. It's not, as I said, it's not always the inexperienced guys who've done it. It's sometimes, you know, if you look at the last game we played, we dropped an up and under, they caught it out the air, they went and scored. You know, we, 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 we late tackled Marnie three times, you know, and it was seasoned players. Billy dropped the up and under and Kroosan tackled Marnie three times and gave penalties away. Now, we're not talking about 19, 20 year old guys that made those mistakes. You're talking about seasoned, seasoned pros. And so the lesson that we've got to learn is not just pitching up physically, it's pitching up understanding how the game's going to go and making sure that you're clever enough and learned enough lessons in the last couple of seasons to understand that the Stormers will take that advantage. If you give them that advantage, they will take it. Um, and we just got to be we just got to be a bit more street smart tomorrow. That's basically the message. It's just a little bit more, yeah, you know, a little bit more street smart about what they're trying to do and what we got to do to make sure they can't get it right. Jake, that street smart uh, um, part. Do you, as a coach, instill it, or does it come instinctively from? Well, here? it comes from both. One is you got to talk about it. So you got to you got to instill it by talking about it. You got to and you got to put them in situations in training where they where they learn it. But also you need to put them together a lot more often in combinations. You, know, you can't, for argument's sake, make six changes and think you're going to get um, you're going to get the same return if you if you kept you know two changes. That's why that's the challenge you have. You know, it's a it's a coaching thing. You've got to you've got to get the balance right. You've got to keep the energy by by giving girls opportunities, and you've got to keep the energy by getting everyone to believe and have hope that they can be part of the team. But you also got to make sure you don't you don't chop and change, because what happens is as I'm learning to understand what what you're going to do in that situation, then you go and I get someone else I've got to play with. Uh, then all of a sudden the picture changes and and then the reaction I have is different. So, but you got to talk about it and you got to. Uh, we've been in this competition three years now. We played we played in a final. We played in a quarter final. We played in a quarter final against the Stormers, who went on to play a home final. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things we could have learned out of that. The Stormers have played two home finals, and people ask, you know, you lost to them. Well, gee, guys, you know, you play, if you, you know, if you play against a team that's on the top of the log for two years in a row, well, chances are highly likely that you're going to end up having to play them away from home, and highly, highly likely that, that you're going to struggle to beat them. But it's going to change. I can tell you now it's going to change. Jake, to take you back to... To Luke Bush, uh, you said he has played 73 yes. before, but not the way you yes. like yes. him to play for you. Yes. What's the what's the difference between how he did play and what you expect from Luke Bush? Uh, I think, but uh, interesting, uh, the, um, Sim, he didn't play the way that I thought that he would play, and I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. But we also probably weren't fair to him because we didn't play a way that suited him as a seven flanker. Okay, so. Um, for two reasons. One is the combination he played in probably didn't suit him. I'm talking about so when we did put him at seven. Uh, so let me give you an example of what I talk about. He's a very, very, very mobile lock. And he's a very, very, um, he's a very good athlete as a lock. So it's like having a flanker wearing a lock jersey. What, what, what I think his challenge is now to, to play like a flanker in a flank jersey. Because if he plays like a lock in a flank jersey, even though it's an athletic lock, it's not it's not a flanker, um, and that's that's my that's my that was my coaching to him this week is now that you're not in the middle of the scrum, the numbers have to change. Not, not because of any other reason. It's because you're not inside anymore. You you you're now on the outside of a scrum, and in the lineouts, you're not the guys calling it. You're now the guy who's 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 doing another job. So you so you the chances of you doing being able to do more is is easier. And that's the challenge that he has, you know. But Marcel's a great carrier. Mark is a great carrier. You know, Ruben, I mean, Ruben, Ruben for Mark is back. I mean, we've missed him a lot. His weight and his power. 
Ruan Nokia never played the last time. So just put things in perspective. Last time we played the Stormers, Ruan never played, other Ruan never played, Marcel never played, Krobis never played. So we got we got five changes to our pack that played against the Stormers last time. And we you know obviously we didn't we weren't as good as we would like to have been in that last game, but with five changes, I think the the dynamic and the skill uh, of every guy will be a lot more complementary. And just looking at your at the spring, at the older spring box on the bench, yes. I'm not being ageist or anything. Um, it does does that mean you? I mean, obviously, it seems like it's obviously to address the fact that you've had close, narrow defeats against yes. guys. That's yes. the first part. Yes. But the second part does that mean you you have to kind of like be ahead in the last twenty or whatever so that they can come in and close it? No, not really. I mean, I don't think I don't think there's a guarantee that you can ever go into a big game like this and say. I'll only put you on if we if we are ahead. Um, I think what it does say to me, Sim, is that the games have been so close. I mean, I remember you guys won't know because you do so many games, but the last time we played them, yeah, we lost a line out on the try line to win the game, like literally five meters out. We got a penalty, we kicked it out, we lost the line out. Now that's how close we came with with another group of players that that weren't as experienced and weren't uh, the same combination we have now. Um, so it can go down to the last lineup, um, and it might go. It might be like that again. But at least I know that if you go to the last lineup, and, and it takes nothing away from the other guys, but you've got Akerman who's a Springbok coming on, and you've got, you know, Nazam Kar is a Springbok coming on, and you've got Kumedi who's now been picked in the in the national setup. He's not just an, another guy. He's now been picked, so he's been earmarked as a as a as a player, you know, that they can see getting you know getting into high levels. And you get a guy like Vili coming on. Then all of a sudden, the, the the messages that go to each other in that pressure situation are a lot more clear, and a little bit more, uh, I suppose, a little bit more f uh, tried and tested than than hit and miss. Thank you. Don't tell me the same plan now. The better here is that the the meetings now of 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 flank. Yeah. What about that? Yeah. The stormers that so big in the same problem with the Galileo scope and so on. The light for me of of us on progress and the fast fast Yeah, Gerry, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm going to ask you something. I think that's not a question of how much all that this while is that point is is what all is cram for the last scope. All is playing with the forward pack. Now, interesting. The last game we also played with the net for two lines. Now, I'm going to give you. So now, think you, you. Three, twee meter lang, mannen in jou lijn staan, maar hier twee lijn staan. So, uh, I mean, jy weet jy, so dan sê, as ek dan, sê byvoorbeeld, een pak kies wat nie lijn staan, balle kan wen, en, en leg jy my twee lijn staan, en dan, dan sê ek beter dan een ander afdeling. Maar ek moet seker maak ons concentreer op ons eie. Want ek weet wat ons kan doen, ons weet, ek weet wat ons wil wees as een span. Um, ons het in die verlede, en dis, ek gee nou iets hier, wat, wat, Ons het in die verlede probeer speel in een wijze wat miskien nie te slim was om tegen die stormers te wen nie. En ek dink weer eens, dit een les wat ons geleer het en dit is een les wat ons vir die spelers gesê het en, en, en die combinaties nou van Ludwig saam met Marco en Marcel, dit is een nieuwe combinatie, maar dit gaan miskien vir ons een geleentheid gee om, om een ander dimensie te bring na ons spel toe. En ek dink, as ons dit kan recht kry, as ons weet, ons, ons kan in een manier speel, en ons het het gedoen teen baie spanne, maar ons is eerlijk om ook te sien die laaste paar seisoene teen die stormes, het die, het die recipe nie gewerk nie. So, ons moet nou, ons moet slim genoeg wees as een squad om, om miskien iets anders te, te probeer. So, Jake, you mentioned uh, Pele, I tell you a bit of comment here. Yes. Um, he's grown so much, firstly, uh, since he's come through the Bulls under your tutelage. What do you think has been the secret to that goal? Uh, this scene and getting into uh, that Barca Lagos squad? I'll tell you what the most important thing is, he's grown up. I mean, he's, by his own admission, he's grown up. He made mistakes at the Sharks, he told me, you know, probably was young, you know, probably did things he shouldn't have done, you know, um, you know, whether it was not focusing on rugby, I mean, I'm not trying to knock the kid, but I'm saying, he, by his own admission, he's come to a new club, uh, he's probably a bit more focused, he's, you know, he's got older, um, he sees he sees that if he puts effort in, he gets a return. Um, yeah, and, in, and he's, every chance you've given him, 
I mean, that we've given him, he's taken. He's played well, he's got, you know, he's... So I think the most important thing for him is he's, he's grown up. He's, he's you know, you know, as I said, he's even admitted to me. He's had to make some changes to the way that he trains. He's made changes to the way that he looks after his body, you know, all that sort of thing. And I mean, he's now a genuine, genuine athlete. And he's young. You know, I asked him today, how many times you played in front of a full crowd? He said, never. So again, it's something that, I'm not talking about DHS versus college when there's 5,000 people. I'm talking about, uh, you know, and he said never. So it just shows you another, another thing that he can tick on his, on his, on his growth process, process is playing in front of a big crowd as a, as a professional rugby player. And let's not underestimate it. It's daunting for a guy, man. daunting for anybody. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter you know, how many times you've done it. You play in front of a full house crowd and there's 50,000 and, you know, and it's... Uh, you got you got to learn to do that too. And, and with that in mind, how how tough is it to have to explain to him the change that you made this week by bringing uh, Rima Ludwig into that number seven yeah. jumper and telling him that Luke is for the better of the team? How yeah. tough is it to have to win with him and other players in the new sports didn't get a chance? Yeah, just to understand. No, that look, I think I, I think it's easy. It's easy if you're honest. I mean, uh, there's no agenda. I mean, I'm honest. I said to him, I think that's what I think we need to start with. You can come on. You know, when you come on, you're coming on with Akar, you're coming on with Nizam, and you're coming on with Willie. You know, with Willie. Uh, I mean, so that it's not, you know, it's not, it's not a case of, you know, it's not a case of because you come, you know, because you're finishing the game, you are less important than someone who's starting the game. You know? And there are going to be games where I'm going to start him. You know? So, I think the one thing which we're very good at, and I'm saying as a group, is being honest with each other. So if he's not happy, he'll come and tell me. You know, but if, if I'm honest with him. Then, then he understands. So there's no, there's no. He, he's very happy that he's part of the 23. He's very happy that he, that he can contribute, and and he's no different to. I mean, imagine Villiers won two World Cups. He's sitting on a bench in the biggest game we've had this year. But you know, that doesn't mean that that he's not rated. It just means it's what we think is in. You know, what's needed. We've got a, we've got a, a philosophy here at the Bulls. We we do what is needed to win the Test match, you know, and and all the game and. Tomorrow is a test for us, and we need to do what we need to do. All of us need to do what's needed to win. And just lastly, from my side, you mentioned that you expect things to change between this dominance in South African rugby, which is in the storms. Going to change. Moment. How close or how far do you think the Bulls team is to the circuit the storms? I'll side? tell you at seven o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a whole rundown at seven o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, if I sat here and I told you three years ago that we're going to have a game where it's going to be full house against Stormers, you would have laughed at me. Yeah. You would have laughed at me. So, how far have we gone? Well, geez, in three years to go from where we were to having a full house in our stadium is a hell of a way. There are not many unions that have done that. And that's credit to them. So, you know, how good are we going to be? Look, I'm excited, guys. I can see we, it's, it, we can't ask for more. 50,000 at home, must-win game with a squad that's determined to do well. I mean, that's the measurement that, I can put, that we can put on the table. Only way we'll know whether we're good enough is at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And if we're not, well, then we know we've got to get better. You, know? you guys follow for Formula One? Yeah. Red Bull are dominated. You know? It wasn't long ago before Mercedes won everything. So it's going to change. As sure as I'm standing here, it's going to change. You know? like people have told you five seasons ago that Lewis Hamilton wasn't going to win a title and Red Bull were going to be dominant, you would have laughed at me. So you know, the positive thing about sport is Liverpool beat Chelsea the other day with babies. No one thought that was going to happen either. You know? So it's going to change. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you it's going to change. And tomorrow, if it changes, I'll be very happy. If it doesn't, we've just got to keep making sure that we're good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake.